for today's video we're going to take a look at a MADAS Model 20 electromechanical calculator made in Switzerland in the late 1950s or early 1960s. This particular machine is the 20LZVG which has fully automatic division but doesn't have the automatic multiplication that some of the other models had. My machine was sold in the UK by the Maldivo Calculating Machine Company Limited, as can be seen from this additional badge on the front. The machine was in a fairly poor state when it came to me. It was quite rusty in places, and someone had obviously tried to fix it, using force, which had left several of the levers and linkages bent and damaged. Overall though, the condition wasn't too bad, and I was pretty confident that it would run again. So I'll get the outer panels off and point out a few of the parts that needed particular attention. The screws to remove the outer covers are fairly obvious and the little knob that you can use to turn the machine by hand also needs to be removed. And with the screws removed each panel should come off relatively easily. The rear panel has some guides that prevent the carriage from coming off so that needs to be removed while we're at it and next to come off is the carriage itself. Someone had tried levering this off in the past, causing some damage, but there's actually a little release lever on the front, which we'll look at in a moment. On some models the release lever is easily visible, but in this case it's hidden behind the input register display surround. So I'll undo the two screws, taking note that the left hand screw is cut short. We'll mention this again later. And with the surround removed, we can access the release lever just here. And then it's simply a case of pulling the release lever towards the front of the machine and lifting the carriage upwards and away from the machine. As is the case with most of these machines, there were plenty of seized bearings and linkages with dried old oil that all needed freeing off and re-lubricating. One of the most damaged components on this machine was this pin and the lever behind that it attaches to. It was so far out of position that it was preventing the division set button from going down, amongst other things. When the machine arrived it had been assembled incorrectly. The short screw for the input register display surround had been fitted somewhere at the front of the machine, with one of the longer ones fitted to the surround. The longer screw protrudes further through the hole, hitting this axle beneath, and jamming this lever, which is an integral part of the automatic division mechanism. I had kept all the screws in their original positions, and only spotted the error when I did the final reassembly, and the machine no longer stopped when the carriage moved to the right after the division set button had been pressed. Another part that was seized and needed freeing up were these movable gears that drive the register. If I press the minus button they move downwards driving the carriage backwards, and if I press the plus button they move upwards driving the carriage gear from the opposite side and thereby turning it in the opposite direction. In the middle of the machine is the main drive shaft, with the manual operation knob protruding through the case. Just behind the main gear is the braking mechanism. If I press the plus button, you'll see that the brake lifts out of its recess, allowing the machine to turn. Partway through the revolution, you'll see the brake move back towards the braking disc, and then actually rest against the braking disc, before dropping back into the recess, and thereby stopping the machine in the correct place. Once everything was freed off, the brake didn't release fully when the division button was pressed, and it also didn't close the contacts on the motor switch, so clearly there was something wrong. After much investigation, I found that this part of the lever coming from the division button was bent, so it needed to be bent back into the correct shape, which involved removing the keyboard before the lever could be straightened. Luckily, keyboard removal on this machine is pretty simple, and it didn't present much of a challenge. As you'd expect, many of the number wheels on the register were jammed and needed careful freeing off, using light oil and also my trusty hot air gun, which you've seen me use on previous videos. The heat helps to loosen the stubborn old oil, being careful not to heat painted or plastic parts. Both of the clearing racks were tight, and this set of metal fingers had been bent out of shape when someone had tried levering the carriage off the machine in the past. 
There were a couple of missing buttons on the machine, this division stop button and the keyboard repeat button over on the left, so a 3D printed replacements for these two. I didn't have the original power lead for the machine, so I made an adapter plate to fit a standard C14 socket. The original socket had two pins plus earth on the surround, but it also had some of the suppression circuitry on the back, with a pair of inductors, a pair of capacitors going to ground, and a resistor across the output terminals. So I also had to make an enclosure to contain this circuitry, that sits inside the base of the casing. It would have probably been simpler if I had just made a replica plug instead. Anyway, I think we can now take a look at the machine in its finished form. Operating the calculator is much the same as other mechanical calculators. For addition, I'll simply enter a number into the keyboard. So I'll go for 1234, and you can see that showing on the input register display. If I've made a mistake, I can either correct it by pressing another key, or I can clear the whole keyboard with this button marked with the 3 on the left. So I'll enter the 1234 again, and press the plus button. The keyboard is automatically cleared, and the number is added into the output register at the top. The counter below that is displaying 1 because we've done one addition. If I now enter 750 into the keyboard, and press the plus button again, we get the answer of 1984 displayed in the output register, and 2 displayed in the counter because we've now performed two additions. I can now clear the output register using the button marked with a 1, and clear the counter with the button marked 2, leaving the machine ready for the next calculation. For subtraction, first you need something in the register to subtract from. You can either add a number using the keyboard and the plus button, or you can enter it directly into the register using these knobs at the top. So I'll put a 1 here to give us 10,000, and then I'll type 1984 into the keyboard and press the minus button, leaving us with the answer of 8016 displayed in the register. But you can see that the counter is showing us all 9s. That's because it was at 0 when we did the subtraction, and the counter underflows to all 9s. Depending on what we're calculating, that might not matter, but if we wanted to keep a track of how many subtractions we'd done, we can reverse the direction of the counter using this lever here. So if I clear everything, and enter the 10,000 again, now I can subtract my 1984, and 3456, and 1234, and 2260, leaving us with the answer of 1066 in the register. And you can see that we've done four subtractions, which is displayed in the counter. Multiplication on this machine is just done by multiple additions of a number. So first I have to press this button on the left. This stops the keyboard from automatically clearing after one addition. So if I want to multiply 8 by 7, I'll enter 8 onto the keyboard, and then hold the plus button for 7 revolutions. And you can see that we've multiplied 8, which is still showing on the keyboard, by 7, which is showing in the counter, giving us a result of 56 in the output register. But if we want to multiply by something more than a single digit number, we can use these carriage shifting buttons to move the carriage from the units position, into the tens, one hundreds, one thousands, and so on. So if I want to multiply 1234 by 2345, I'll enter the 1234 onto the keyboard, and then in the units position, I'll hold the plus button for 5 revolutions. Then shift the carriage right by one position, and hold the plus button for 4 revolutions. Then shift the carriage again, and hold the plus button for 3 revolutions. And finally, shift the carriage once more, and hold the plus button for 2 revolutions. And you can see that we've multiplied 1234, which is still showing on the keyboard, by 2345, which is showing on the counter, giving us the total of 2,893,730 displayed on the register. And now for division, which is fully automatic on this machine. 
I'll clear the keyboard, but I don't need to clear the counter or register because these will be automatically cleared before the division commences. So if I enter 355 onto the keyboard, I tend to do this all the way over to the left, but I don't actually need to do that, it's just habit. And now press the division set button. It will clear the counter and the register and move the carriage all the way to the right before adding the dividend of 355 into the register. Next I'll enter the divisor of 113 into the keyboard and press the div button to start the division, like this. And at the end of the division we're left with the answer showing in the counter of 3.14159929 and so on, which is the approximation of pi that you get when you divide 355 by 113. To show what's happening I'll just re-enter the 355 and press the division set button again, and then the 113 and turn the power off before pressing the div button, that way I can turn the machine by hand and you'll see that 113 is subtracted from the register once, twice, three times, and then it's subtracted a fourth time, but because there was less than 113 left in the register, it's underflowed to nines, triggering the machine to add 113 to clear that underflow, and you can see that it's now showing three in the counter, then it shifts the carriage one place to the left and subtracts once, twice, the register underflows to all nines, the 113 is added back in again, and the register moves one place to the left. This process carries on until the machine reaches the end of the carriage and stops. There's just a few buttons left to look at now. If I'm doing a division, but I don't need so many decimal places of accuracy, I can stop the division early using this stop button to the right of the input display. So if I enter 1 and press the division set button, then enter 3 and press the div button, the division will start, but I can stop it once it's completed the current column by pressing the stop button, like this. giving us the answer of 0.333, which would have just carried on with more threes if I'd let it carry on to the end of the register. There's also another division cancel lever, just above the div button. This one will stop the division at the end of the current revolution, rather than waiting for that column to complete. This is useful if you've inadvertently tried to divide by zero. So if I enter 22 and press the division set button, then enter nothing into the keyboard and press the div button, the machine will just carry on subtracting nothing, and because there will be no underflowing to trigger the carriage to move, it will never stop, like this. And pressing the standard stop button won't help because that one will only work after an underflow has occurred, but moving this lever upward will stop the machine, like that. And finally for division, if we want to subtract the result of one division from the result of another division, we can use this lever on the top right to put the machine into minus division mode. So if we want to calculate 11,321,856 divided by 78 minus 1,015,770 divided by 7, we can do the first division in the normal way. So that's 11,321,856, and then press the division set button, and then enter the 78 and press the div button. giving us the answer of 145,152 in the counter. Next we move the lever into the minus division position, and pull out this little switch below the carriage on the left. This stops the machine from clearing the counter when you press the division set button. 
In this particular case, the register is all zeros because the last calculation worked out exactly. But if there was any remainder from the last division, you'd need to clear the register manually, leaving the counter total intact. And next we can enter the second dividend of 1,015,770. And press the division set button. And then finally enter the divisor of 7 and press the division button. And after all that, we're left with the answer of 42 displayed in the counter. There's just a couple of other things that I forgot to show. As with most of these mechanical calculators, you can move these markers to indicate the commas between the thousands or the decimal places, depending on what calculation you're doing. Similarly, there are marks for the columns on the keyboard, which can be rotated into position using the knurled wheel at the front. The wheel is missing on column 1. I might get round to making a replacement one day. Lastly, there's a register splitting lever here. This stops the register to the left of this mark from clearing, so you can use the left side of the register as a basic memory device while continuing to do calculations on the right. If I fill the register with 3s and press clear, all the digits are reset to 0. But if I repeat this operation, adding 3s all the way along, and then turn the splitting lever and press clear again, the 3s to the left of the mark remain in place. So, just before we finish, here's a couple of clips showing the machine doing its automatic division with the covers removed. Anyway, I think that will do for this video. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to click on the bell icon so you get notifications when future videos are released. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.